metaphors, meta-beliefs, logical levels, what remains to be taught. Here's a, here's a improved map. I have made this improved teaching map to help us understand um, what's going on with metaphors, logical levels, and this very fascinating high-level area of mental operation we call meta-beliefs. So if we think of this way, we have our day-to-day -day, uh, experienced reality, which is our, our, our zone, kind of the zone we're in, and that's what I would call your, uh, your normal-sized frames, the kind of framing you use for day-to-day -day thinking and day-to-day -day living and functioning would be here in the middle. And of course, when you chunk down and you go to very specific kind of stuff, say when someone asks you for uh, evidence for something, this is sort of what we would call our, our area of evidence. Okay, this is, if we want to back something up or we want to prove that something is so, or we want to indicate the exact thing we're talking about, the precise specification, Say if you're buying something and you want to specify an exact size of a screw or you want to specify an exact integrated circuit or you want to specify the exact ingredients in a recipe. Of course, all that kind of precise, exact stuff is very fine-grained and that is here and that is chunking down. When we're talking about uh, generalizations, when we go up, we chunk up to generalizations, that would be where our, our frames, our broad beliefs, our um, theories about things, our notions about how things work, what words are mean and how the meaning of words connects to the actual reality of the world. In generalizations, with the chunking up, chunking up, metaphors, very interestingly, simultaneously work on two planes. One on the chunk up general frame where there is lateral shifting okay very strong lateral shifting at this level so we find a generalization and then with that generalization we find an instantiation or a very very specific example or image or picture which gives life to this generalization so we're going for this very very specific concrete often visual, but not necessarily visual, um, metaphor to help give the quality of evidence or truth or veracity or solidity to this shift that we've made up here. We've made, perhaps we've made a, a slight shift in exactly what the generalization is, or we've kept the generalization uh, somewhat constant, and then we've moved down here and we found some very, very different thing which resembles or has some connection to what's happening up here, the metaphorical level. So metaphors and beliefs are very powerful because they jump, they jump over in a sense, they skip over. In some uh, languages is referred to as saltation or skipping. They skip over the middle level and they connect the higher broad frame level to the finer evidence grain specific level. So you might be asking, well, that's, we've gone over that. We've heard that. So what, what else is there? Well, the other thing that there is that we haven't talked about, and NLP is generally fairly silent about, above generalizations, there's one more level above. And this is the area we call meta-beliefs. Okay. Now, the meta-belief is probably the most important. It's probably the most significant of all areas where attitude change and belief change and worldview change and self-image change take place because this is, as we say with the double chunk up, this is what you believe about your beliefs. This is the set of theories you have about your frames or your generalizations. This is where you establish for yourself what it means to believe something, or what a belief is, or how a belief operates, or 
why you should have a belief or why you should not have a belief. These are meta-beliefs, okay? Meta-beliefs are very much where self-image, institutional theories, religions, very large-scale philosophies, identities are up here in the area of meta-belief. And uh, meta-beliefs also may be able to jump way down here to uh, specifics, and there may be specific images or specific symbols, a lot of symbols, that may uh, connect to a meta-belief. So certain, certain types of, um, uh, say, religious symbols or cultural symbols might be something very specific, like um, that thing you see in uh, Chinese philosophy and, and Oriental philosophy, the, the circle with the two, um, the black and the white tadpole creatures, the little Tai Chi circle there, that expresses an entire worldview and that expresses an entire theory about the way one goes about thinking and the way that one goes about believing things and thinking things. So that circle figure with the, the two um, black, the black and the white form that are swirling into each other is actually um, an image of a meta-belief that, that informs a culture's view about its meta-beliefs, how it thinks about thinking, or how it believes about believing. When we do major change work, when we do work of very great significance, sometimes using brilliant metaphors, if we use our metaphors brilliantly enough and clearly enough, they may go up here and they may actually affect the way our meta-beliefs work. And Say if you have a belief that changing beliefs doesn't do very much, or you have a belief about what your beliefs or thoughts look like, what, what a thought is, or how a thought operates, or what a belief does to you, that's a meta-belief. And often to get the most powerful cultural changes, or therapeutic changes, or changes in self-image, or changes in belief about what one can do in life, one has to change the meta-beliefs. One has to change the beliefs about what beliefs do. And one has to change the beliefs about changing beliefs. And is it possible to change them? And what is it like to change them? And what happens when they change? So really, instead of just a three-part model that's been presented so far, there's a four-part model, okay? The four-part model is the, the main central position the chunking up to generalizations and general frames, the topmost level of meta-beliefs, and the bottom level of evidence and specificity. All right. When you start putting all of those together, when you start putting the various features of the belief system and the various features of the way that attitudes, mindset, cultural beliefs, um, large-scale meta-generalizations, things that are meta to. We might call these governing metaphors, governing beliefs, governing images, governing uh, symbols, gov governing philosophies. That's when we start to get the really deep, profound, significant change. The change where people walk out of a, a seminar, or walk out of a, an experience, or walk out of a meeting with a a therapist or a counselor having a fundamental shift for those fundamental shifts to happen those, those at the very core of one's being those will take place in the realm of the meta belief okay so we've got to be very very smart about meta beliefs and think about them all right so there you go meta beliefs